Hi, welcome to my channel. I thought I'd do a video on Irish wedding guest etiquette. This is probably one of my most asked questions that I get in emails and messages, people coming to Ireland for a wedding and not knowing exactly how things work. So I thought I would run through a typical Irish wedding from start to finish and hopefully this helps. If you like this kind of thing, please give this video a like, subscribe for more and let's get started. So first up, I just want to say that I do have to generalize in this video. Obviously, every wedding is different, so I'm just going to be doing a very typical example. I used to film weddings, so I've been to so many weddings all across Ireland, and every wedding is different. So yeah, it's going to be very... I'm going to do a lot of generalizing. So the first thing is invites. I think like most Western countries, a save the date would be sent out usually around six to nine months before the wedding, and it would have the names, the date, and the location. It would also have the names of exactly who's invited, so if it says plus one, you get a plus one. If it only says your name, you don't get a plus one. Then the wedding invitation will be sent out around two to three months before the wedding, and it will have all the details like exact locations and times, accommodation, dress code if there is one, and it will usually have a phone number or email or wedding website where you can RSVP. And I've never met a couple that didn't have to chase up RSVPs, and it's painful, so if you RSVP before the deadline, they will love you for it. <laughs> the next thing you need to do is pick out an outfit so think of the dress code. If there's no dress code on the invitation then it's usually just cocktail or moderately formal which is men wear suits and women wear elegant dresses. The dresses are usually knee length floor length dresses are saved for when it's black tie. So if it says black tie, men wear tuxedos or formal suits with bow ties and women wear the floor length gowns. You can wear hats or fascinators with any dress code. It used to be kind of only the mothers of the bride and groom wore the hats, but um, it's becoming more popular now for other guests to wear hats too. Also, try to avoid wearing the same color as the bridesmaids. If you can find out what color they're wearing, great. If not, I usually go by the invitation. You know, if the invitation is green, I won't wear green because I'm assuming that's the color of the wedding. Um, it's no big deal if you do match the bridesmaids, but I don't think you really want to be <laughs> mistaken for being in the bridal party. All other colors are grand, except for white or ivory. That is what the bride will be wearing. I know some people think that rule is stupid and you'll never get mistaken for the bride, but even if you think it's grand, you might get some judgmental side eyes from other guests who don't think it's grand. I remember once I was filming a wedding and one of the guests was wearing a short, poofy, ivory dress and the bride was wearing pretty much the identical dress and it was just embarrassing for everyone. It's one day, one color to avoid. Don't be that person. <laughs> so the next thing to think about is where you're going to stay. So like hotels or B&Bs. If the wedding is in a hotel, there's usually some rooms blocked off for guests that will get it at a reduced rate. Um, and those details will be on the invitation or wedding website. So you can call up the hotel and reserve one of those rooms. Um, and guests pay for their own rooms. Unless maybe if you're in the bridal party, and this varies all over Ireland, there's some weddings where absolutely it's expected, of course the bride and groom will pay for the bridesmaids and groomsmen to stay over, and other parts in Ireland it would never be expected. Where I am it wouldn't really be expected, but um, yeah, it varies. And obviously if you live nearby, you can get a taxi home or drive home. But when you stay over, there is some crack that you get that I will talk about later, later on in the video. The next thing you need to sort out is the wedding gift. Generally now, the most common thing is to give cash. Most couples, when they get married, they're already living together. They have their home set up, so they don't need toasters or kettles. If you do want to get them a nice gift, you can get them some wine glasses or a fondue set or a nice piece of artwork. I'm pulling these examples from gifts we got at our wedding. Um, but generally, people give cash. And there's no set amount I think this is another thing that varies around Ireland. Where I am, it would usually be 100 euro for a single person and for a couple, 150 to 200 euro. I know in other places in Ireland though, that would be considered low and it would be more 150 for a single person and 250 to 300 euro for a couple. Um, but people just give what they can and no one's gonna judge you for the amount you give. Sometimes the bride and groom might request something like a donation to their honeymoon, 
but gift registries with a list of gifts and um, that's not really done in Ireland. If you are giving money, you usually put cash in the card and give it to one of the groomsmen on the day of the wedding. And same thing goes for gifts. You can bring the gift to the wedding and give it to one of the groomsmen. Or you can just drop it to the couple before or after the wedding, just bring it to their house. Sometimes that's easier. <laughs> then some general notes for if you're in the bridal party. The bride and groom usually pay for everything for you for the wedding, except for maybe your accommodation and everything leading up to the wedding like hens and stags parties but they'll pay for your suit rental your dresses getting your hair and makeup done you usually get your own shoes unless it's a specific type of shoes that you have to get to match then they would usually get that for you and then the morning of the wedding they'll usually give you a gift like some jewelry to wear that day or a hip flask <laughs> another thing I get asked about is wedding size I think the average number of guests at a typical wedding would be anything from 100 to 160 anything less than 100 would be considered a small wedding and anything more than 160 would be considered a big wedding and bridal parties tend to be two to four bridesmaids and two to four groomsmen on average so now it's the day of the wedding and your first stop is the ceremony. Ceremonies are usually in churches or registry offices or a nice venue. Sometimes it's in the same venue as the reception which is very handy. Weather here is very unpredictable so we don't really do outdoor ceremonies at places like beaches or gardens or cliffs. If you're aiming for an outdoor ceremony, it's usually done in the grounds of a venue so that if it does start raining, you can quickly move inside. But trying to have an outdoor wedding without a plan B is not a very good idea. <laughs> Ceremonies usually start between 1 and 3 p.m. I have been to weddings that started at 12 or 4, but the average is usually 1.32. Guests normally arrive to the venue about 15 to 30 minutes before the ceremony is due to start. I remember I was filming one wedding and it was due to start at 2 and I was at the church and 2 o'clock came and not one person was there. 15 minutes later and still no one was there and I was kind of freaking out like I had got something wrong so I went to the priest and I said this was supposed to start at 2 right? And he looked at me like I had two heads and he was like you expect people to be here on time. And then about 10 minutes later all 150 guests came at once around the corner and they'd been down the road in the pub drinking until they got word that the bride was on her way and then they left. Um, so if there is a pub or a bar nearby, people do tend to congregate there and have a few drinks before things kick off. And ceremonies do tend to start late, usually around 10 to 30 minutes late. I remember I filmed one wedding and the bride was on time but her guests were late so she had to keep circling around the area just waiting for all the guests to get in the church and take their seats so uh, yeah they usually they're usually running late and ceremonies are usually around 20 to 30 minutes unless it's at a church and then it's around an hour. Then after the ceremony, the bride and groom usually walk out first, then comes the bridal party, then the families, and then everyone else files out. And the bride and groom will stand at the door for the receiving line. So they will greet each guest as they come out. And it's usually a very quick greeting because you don't want to hold up the queue. So a very quick shake hand, kiss, hug, you look amazing beautiful ceremony, what a great day, and move on. And then there's usually some milling around outside for about 10 minutes before um, heading to the drinks reception. The drinks reception is in the same venue, great, you can go straight there, otherwise you have to make your own way there, have your own transport. Most people drive, or you can get a taxi, or if it's in walking distance, you can walk but it's not usually ever <laughs> in walking distance. Now for the drinks reception. The drinks reception is usually in the same venue where the meal will be. Occasionally though, the bride and groom like to have a stop off at another location just for the drinks. So they would have ceremony here, drinks reception here and meal here. Like they might want to stop off at their local pub and everyone cram in, have some crack. The bride and groom will get behind the bar to pull their own pints and things like that. <laughs> so usually when you arrive at the drinks reception, you get one free drink. Usually it's a glass of champagne, sometimes it'll be a cocktail or a beer, but you usually get one free welcome drink and then you pay for the rest of your drinks. And at the drinks reception, there's usually some free tea and coffee and some nibbles like scones or cookies or sandwiches 
or canapes but these things don't really fill you so make sure that you have a big breakfast that morning and um, I know some people as well that kind of bring a packed lunch to eat between the ceremony and the drinks reception because it's a long day of drinking and it's going to still be another few hours before you get your next meal so um yeah, you'll probably be hungry. <laughs> and while the guests are at the drinks reception, the bride and groom are usually off getting their photos taken and they come in towards the end to have a quick mingle and chat before the meal is called. So then there's the call for the meal. And this usually happens around 5, 5.30 p.m. So you go to the room and you find the table plan, see what table you're sitting at and uh, go and find your seat. Sometimes there's place names, um, sometimes there's not. You can just choose whichever seat you want. And then there's the menu on the table where you can see what you'll be eating. It's usually around three or four courses and the standard is starter, main, dessert, sometimes a soup or a sorbet and tea and coffee at the end. And you usually get your choice of mains. So someone will come around and ask you beef or fish or whatever. And they'll also ask you, are you drinking red or white? And they'll top up your glass and they'll continue to top up your glass throughout the meal um, until it runs out. It's usually around uh, half a bottle of wine per person. So then it's the meal. The meal usually lasts around two hours and people tend to just stay in their seats for the two hours. They might go out to the smoking garden or the bar, but um, there's no dancing yet. There's nothing else going on. It's usually just the meal. I should also mention rounds here. If someone at your table stands up and says, I'm going to the bar, what are you having to drink? If they get you a drink, you are now in a rounds with the table, which means that everyone takes it in turn to go to the bar and get a round of drinks for everyone. If you think you can't keep up or just don't want to do rounds, you have to say from the beginning that you're just going to get your own drink. Thanks very much. But um, it's very bad etiquette to start in a round and then not finish in a round. If someone buys you a drink, you have to buy them a drink back. Then comes the speeches. Speeches can be before or after a meal. And commonly it's the father of the bride, the groom and the best man. But anyone can make a speech, the bride, a parent, bridesmaid, whoever. And there's a game we like to play in Ireland where everyone puts a bet on how long they think the speeches will be. So everyone puts in the same amount, like five euro or 10 euro and makes their guess. And whoever wins closest to the length of the speeches wins the money back. And they can be anything from 15 minutes to an hour. Also, before the speeches, guests are usually given a glass of champagne. This is for the toast for the bride and groom. So don't drink this until the toast. That's very bad etiquette to have an empty glass to toast with. After the speeches, and meal are finished it's time for the post meal drinks usually the last part of the meal is the cutting of the cake so guests are invited to watch as the bride and groom cut the cake they clap and then post meal drinks everyone usually heads out to the bar or the smoking garden or just mingles around while the band or DJ gets set up if there's a photo booth people go have fun with that if you're staying overnight you might go to your room to freshen up so it's usually just a wait for the dancing to start it's a good wait though. People are usually stuffed after the meal and need the hour to recover before jumping around. Then comes the dancing. Usually the band or DJ will announce the first dance and the bride and groom will come in and start their first dance. About halfway through the bridal party joins in, maybe the parents, and by the end of the song everyone else has joined in too. And then it's just madness on the dance floor. There's always a man or men that get their tie and put it up around their heads. That's usually my husband's job at weddings. And then the women usually take off their heels. Often there's a box of flip-flops or slippers that the bride and groom leave out for guests. Um, when they do take their heels off, but these are always snapped up immediately. So a lot of women tend to bring their own flip-flops to change into. Venues vary on how late they can play music for. So sometimes they'll stop at midnight. Sometimes they can go to 1 a.m. But I think the standard is usually around two or half two. And during the dancing, usually around midnight, comes out the midnight snacks. And people get very excited about the midnight snacks. Platters of food are brought out like cocktail sausages, mini burgers, sandwiches, crisp sandwich packets, and they are all devoured. Usually this is when the wedding cake is brought out too, cut into slices and served with tea or coffee. And this food is so good because it gives you the second wind, the energy to keep going. So um, people get very, are very happy with the midnight food. You know, you might have just eaten a five course fine dining, amazing food, but the midnight snacks 
are where it counts. So then the midnight food has been eaten, the music has stopped and it's time for people to go home. So the next thing to think about is transport home. If you're not staying in the venue but you're staying in a local B&B or somewhere down the road, often the couples will provide a free mini bus to take guests to where they need to go. That's what we did at our wedding because we were staying in a manor house that didn't have enough accommodation for everyone. So we paid for mini buses to bring our guests home. Otherwise you can get a taxi or drive home if you haven't been drinking. But this is the point that most people would go home. Unless you're staying overnight at the venue and then you get to go to the residence bar. Sometimes venues aren't too strict about this but usually the rule is that only the those staying overnight can go to the residence bar where you can keep drinking and keep the party going and this is the crack that I mentioned earlier when you're staying overnight you can go to the residence bar and it usually turns into a sing song so I might pull out a guitar or there might be a piano and everyone is just singing and it is just so much fun at this point it could be 3 a.m. you've likely been drinking for 12 hours there's usually some people passed out on some tables, other people boasting about how they've lasted longer than anyone else, and yeah, the residence bar is just the best crack. Then it's the fall into bed. If you're one of the hardcore gang, this might only be as the sun is coming up. And usually at breakfast the next morning, there's some people that never even made it to bed and are still going and have had more crack than anyone. And that is a typical Irish wedding. I hope I've covered everything and helped you with some Irish wedding guest etiquette. If there's anything I missed or if you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments below. And that's it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye.